Hey guys, Snows here with Hardware Canucks, and coming right after our 12 900K review, it's time to step things, well, down a bit for the more affordable categories. I mean, flagship products are nice to look at and dream about, but most of you are probably like me. I'm more excited with what less expensive options have to offer, since that's more likely what I'd buy, or recommend to friends. Hence, we have the i5 12600K, a CPU that's meant to compete with some of the most popular options on the market right now, like the Ryzen 5 5600X, and yes, the higher end Ryzen 7 5800X. And let's be honest, those two have been sitting in their position for a long, long time, since Intel simply failed to mount any real competition against them up until now. The NZXT Capsule Microphone. Get the best airflow for your vocal experience with a modular pop-out chamber to simplify installation on and off the bass. Control the gain for best volume RPM in a package that looks this good with USB-C and headphone input I.O. with a true unbox plug and play solution for your loud thoughts to shine. The capsule sounds pretty neutral as you can hear, plus it's a good place to start if you plan to overclock with EQ later. Check out the NZXT Capsule Black or White down below. So let's jump into the specs. There's six performance cores and four efficient cores for a total of 16 threads. That is all wrapped up into a package that is supposed to cost $300 USD. If, like me, you live in Canada and are used to those crazy markups, it's not going to be that bad since 390 maple leaf dollars will get you a 12600K. That puts it at about the same price as the 5600X and it's a lot less than the 5800X. Well, editing snows here with a little correction. While the 5800X's MSRP is definitely way more expensive at 449, the price actually went down. The cheapest you can currently find it is at Micro Center for 329 USD, but that might change because it was 299 about a couple of days ago. Or at other retailers, you can find it for around 390 USD. And like the last one, this isn't really a normal review either. I'm gonna go deeper into some interesting power and temperature temperature results, and I'm going to focus on real-world testing and show both Windows 10 and 11 results since, yes, everyone's still in the sort of transition phase between OS's. So let's see if Intel got what it takes to grab the value crown, something they've never really owned. As for the test system, here are all of the specs. You can pause if you want to read through it. I should also mention that resizable bar support was enabled and all of the systems were set at AMD's or Intel's default settings. So no PBO, no one-click OC, just bone stock. Alder Lake's behavior is very dependent on the situation you put it in, and the 12600K isn't any different. In gaming, on average, it consumes less power than the 5800X and only six watts more than the 5600X. See, it's pretty good. It's a year late, but Intel is finally on the efficient side when gaming, at least. Temperatures were pretty impressive too, with it getting the lowest results at under 60 degrees on a Noctua NH-U12S with its fan running at around 1100 RPM. Now at that point, it might look like it's in the bag for this chip but the 12900K was also not that bad when gaming. For that flagship, it all went to hell when it was hit uh, at an all-core load. Heck, I was expecting the 12600K to do the same thing, but I was pleasantly surprised. While it's nowhere near as efficient as the 5600X, it fares better than the 5800X and the 11600K. It only consumes about 120-ish watts the entire time of our Maya render, which is odd given it's 150 watt PL2. The 12600K isn't that hard to keep in check. You want proof? Check out these core temperatures. They're actually cooler than our 5800X. And while you can't call this a cool running processor, it's not anywhere near the searing heat of the 12900K. As a matter of fact, you should be able to get away with a uh, decent mid-tier cooler like a 212 EVO rather than a high-end 360mm AIO. Let's get into our suite of benchmarks. For synthetics in Cinebench R23, we can see how well this architecture behaves in multi and single core full workloads. It beats the more expensive 5800X by a pretty good margin. Past synthetics for Mozilla Compile in Windows 11, it is a close second after the 5800X. And I mean very close, but that is extremely impressive when you compare it to its price competitor, the 5600X. It destroys it. In Windows 10 though, well, something is broken. 
the load only runs on the E cores. And by the way, we reached out to Intel about it and they did confirm that those issues are present. So this isn't up to our configuration. In handbrake, it edges out the 5800X by a few seconds, but once again, it gets a lead of almost 30% over the 5600X. I mean, it is a 16 thread CPU after all, so those extra little cores are putting in some work. As for Windows 10, well, yeah, it's still broken for now. In DaVinci Resolve, it's actually pretty tight. While it does have a slim lead over every processor tested, all three are pretty close. This is mostly due to the uh, load being GPU centric. Thankfully, no big differences between Windows 10 and 11. In Premiere, we're looking at a clear lead. At around three minutes and 40-ish seconds for our render, we got a chicken dinner over the way more expensive 5800X, which clocks in at around five minutes and 20 seconds. Keep in mind that Premiere does leverage the integrated graphics on the Intel CPUs, so that's something to consider. For the 3D modelers and animators, you'll love this chip in Blender. Once again, the 12600K is the winner, performing slightly faster than the 5800X. We can kind of forget about the 5600X here for this one, but past that to our Blender EV renders, we see it essentially match the 5800X in performance, and of course, leaving the 5600X in the rear view mirror. As you can see, for the rest of the tests, we get the same story, the 12600K at least matching the performance of the 5800X, but clearly leaving the 5600X in its trail. It seems like unsurprisingly, the number of cores and threads lie supreme in these benchmarks. Who to thunk? Now, let's move on to some gaming benchmarks. In CSGO, we're starting to see a shift. The 12600K gets absolutely demolished by AMD's 5600X. Now sure, there is a bug in Windows 11 that makes it a little worse than uh, in Windows 10, but even so, it still gets crushed, especially into 1% lows. Now we are talking about performance way above 360 FPS, which is pretty much the highest end monitor out there, but still, we can clearly see that AMD has the edge here. The same seems to be the case in Valorant. Now this could be due to the gap in clock speed that the 12600K has. I mean, these two are very single threaded games. So let's see how it goes on more multi-core optimized games. First, we have Doom. All three CPUs perform similarly with the 12600K edging out both in consistency with these 1% loads, but still, it nestles itself in between the AMD CPUs and average FPS. In Rainbow Six Siege, we see it top the charts with a small lead in average FPS. But look at these 1% lows. Now we see how consistent Alder Lake can be. It beats both by a huge margin. I mean, that's over 100 FPS. In Far Cry 6, we see more of the same in average FPS with a clear lead. But they're very close in their frame consistencies. Honestly, I didn't expect that after the CSGO and Valorant results. Then we move on to Call of Duty. In this game, we see the 12600K edging out the 5800X by a small margin. Now it's slight, but it only happens in Windows 11. In Windows 10, it's trailing the 5800X by a couple of FPS. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we get more of the same with it being the 5800X, but only by a few FPS on average. But it does get a nice boost in its 1% lows, which brings us to the last game, Red Dead Redemption 2. In this case, it trails both the 5600X and 5800X, but it really is not enough to make a difference when playing the game. So in conclusion, if you compare Intel's 12600K to AMD's offerings, well, Intel wins in performance per dollar and performance per watt. Its power and heat performance also push back against the uh, assumption that every Alder Lake CPU is going to be a power sucking blast furnace. This could be the deal that gamers have been looking for as an alternative to the 5600X ever since AMD kind of incrementally upped the price from $200 to $300. The problem right now though is platform cost. Anyone buying a mid-range AMD chip has the option to buy a pretty feature-packed B550 board. And these easily run at sub $100. I've seen some for like 69 bucks. Nice. And you get everything there. You get OC support and PCIe Gen 4 speeds for your GPU and NVMe. So yeah, B550 is going to make the overall system cost cheaper for an all AMD system. 
Meanwhile, the cheapest Z690 board that I could find in stock was 200 bucks. That's two thirds the price of a 12600K. That's insane. Now, some motherboards are slightly cheaper, but even at $170, it's still a little too much for a mid-range CPU. And while sure, it has all the platform's advanced features like PCIe Gen 5, what Intel is lacking is a B550 competitor in the sub $100 to $150 price range. But Intel is Intel, so whatever they come up with, be it a B660 board or whatever naming scheme that they want to adopt, I don't think that Intel will make the necessary platform changes to be competitive. But you know what? I truly hope that they crush our expectations. I mean, they did produce a price competitive product here. Let's just hope that they extend that to their motherboard features. So I'm calling you out, Intel. B660, I want CPU overclocking and I want all of the bells and features of 690. You know what you can keep? Keep that PCIe Gen 5 because nothing really supports it right now. In any case, guys, that is pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about, well, the video as is. You can click right here to see the latest video, right here to see my latest video on my channel, right here to subscribe to Hardware Canucks, and right here to subscribe to Boot Sequence. And yes, I will have that many end screen cards at every end of videos on Hardware Canucks. It will never end. Take care, <laughs> goodbye.